What's up guys, my name is Dichronic, your host here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be talking about the top 5 new super changes to Destiny 2. Now this video will basically recap my favorite top 5 changes out of all the super changes that happened last Tuesday on January 29th to recap the new changes that make these things absolutely amazing. Now there's been some crazy changes to some supers that make them way more effective at doing one particular thing, and I gotta say you really gotta take another look at these supers if you haven't already. Link in the description down below will be a link to the patch notes if you want to see exactly how every single one of them change they show different numbers and how they change and where they change including all the changes to weapons and everything that they change with the patch notes so look in the link in the description down below you can see everything that is going on in this video i'm going to be recapping my five favorite changes in no particular order one is not better than five it's just my top five favorite changes that are coming to these super today's video has been brought to you by cute little ducklings on screen now you can see a bunch of different fluffin cutin puffin dufflins <laughs> What am I saying? That was adorable. Oh, I gotta listen back to that. Fluffin', cutin', puffin', dufflins. Ah, oh, beautiful. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the first one, which is gonna be the new upgrades to the Sharpshooter Gunslinger class. Now, if you did not know, the Golden Gun Supers got an increase of damage by 40%. Now, that includes the Six Shooter and the Celestial Nighthawk, and an increase to 40% damage with Celestial Nighthawk is a significant amount of increase. On top of that, you also get Six Shooter more damage against bosses and all that stuff, so it makes it more feasible against bosses, but 40% more damage on Celestial Nighthawk? It already did ridiculous amounts of damage. It is definitely something you really gotta take another look at and use more often. Basically, they're trying to make people use less Blade Barrage and more Celestial Nighthawk. Celestial Nighthawk being that one shot right in the crit of a boss, so it's very specifically used for bosses. So they made it so it's a more viable option. Next up, let's talk about the Golden Gun 6 Shooter. The base damage was increased from a 275 to 300 per shot outside of the 40% damage increase to just bosses. And on top of that, kills now return a bullet to the Golden Gun's magazine, making it so you can get more than six kills with a single six shot Golden Gun. Because as soon as you get another kill, you get a shot back into your magazine however obviously you're going to get to the point where you run out of super because there's still a time amount of super you can have left but you can still get up to like 10 12 kills with this single super and each one of those kills will spawn orbs so in pve it's very effective at spawning orbs for your team and clearing out a whole bunch of little ads and on top of that it's also very very useful in pvp if you think about it the six shot golden gun is one of those things you can definitely miss and you'll still have more shots in and not only that if you get kills with it you get even more shots and you can fire it faster than the sharpshooter you don't have to worry about one shot missing and just missing a third of your entire payload basically two to three shots per enemy you can blow away the titan shield you can uh, miss a shot or two uh, on en every enemy and you should be able to get as many kills as you possibly would want to if you have the whole team in front of you which is really really nice next up coming up at number three probably my favorite change out of all the different super changes is gonna be the changes that happen to the titan striker class specifically the fist of havoc code of the juggernaut now there's a couple different changes that happen with it the heavy slam attack was reduced there's also bonus damages to bosses vehicles base elite and the mini boss enemies but what made this one change and to be so much more interesting is going to be the changes to the code of Jugg juggernaut shoulder charge now the first thing they did is they reduced the cost by 83 percent making it an extremely low cost alternative to slamming all the time so much so that you might even consider using it for mobility if you want to get somewhere quicker if you just want to just go as fast as possible chasing an enemy you can use that shoulder charge to really get around and on top of that the trample perk which allows you to get more super energy back from getting super kills while in the trampling code of the juggernaut super can now trigger every 0.5 seconds instead of every one second making it so every single time you can shoulder charge you can get trample from it making it so the shoulder charge is the ideal way to use it you can literally use your super for like minutes at a time i think i've seen a, a video by esoteric where he does the entire like enemy section starting right when the first enemies are uh, in the whisper mission and just basically using one super to get all the way from there to the boss and it is incredible and i gotta say it is definitely something you should take a look at because it really shows off how powerful this thing can be and i gotta say i've always talked about the arc staff from the hunters being the ultimate and the best ad clear as far as just the potential damage how long it lasts and i gotta say this new shoulder charge abilities and making it so it lasts longer might be a good alternative for the titans 
Coming up at number four, let's go ahead and talk about some Warlock changes, specifically to the Warlock Voidwalker. Now, obviously, the Nova Warp Surfer Super got nerfed a whole lot in PvP and still in PvE because of the charge rates and how often, how frequent you can use the Super. But what I gotta say is you really gotta take another look at the Cataclysm Nova Bomb and the Vortex Nova Bomb. Both of them got some pretty heavy damage bonus increases, and I gotta say you really gotta try them again. They are so fun to use. In this particular position, I'm gonna be talking about Cataclysm because this one definitely uh, in my opinion was weaker than the vortex just for the amount of damage you can do to a standstill boss with the vortex and the cataclysm I gotta say now is definitely something you should take another look at because it has a lot of really good uses against the yellow health enemies the mini bosses the elites and stuff this thing can definitely rain fire from above so first off the initial detonation damage was increased from 900 to 1500 damage which is a significant increase the blast radius from 8 meters to 10 meters the secret projectiles which are the little things that uh, separate off of it were increased from 205 to 300 damage literally every single thing is just getting a 50 percent increase it's ridiculous and there's an improved uh, secret projectile turning radius making so the homing is better against certain enemies and fixed issues uh, where these seekers would prematurely be destroyed so overall this thing is just so much more powerful and it just continues to obliterate enemies with those homing seekers now in the video you can see in the background we we're doing some shattered throne and all of those yellow health enemies in the first encounter and the encounters after the first encounter you can basically kill every single one of those with one single cataclysm nova bomb and those guys definitely take a punch i would say an entire trench pearl ikelos cannot kill one of them and that's basically doing three different melee separated out to use all eight shots and this thing can kill it in one shot if you compare it up uh, with some dire ahamkara with those big boss kills you're gonna get a lot of your super back and if the extra little seekers also get a bunch of little ads you can get your entire super back by one of those elite kills and a couple of little kills which makes it a very effective combo at absolutely destroying all the elites and mini bosses that you can possibly find and outside of that, I've got to say I have been waiting for a very long time for those single-use supers to absolutely rise up because this is a lot of fun to use. And lastly, coming up at number 5 is going to be another Warlock subclass known as Dawnblade. The Daybake Super got a lot of buffs to it. First of all, it increased its damage against Miners, Majors, and Mini Bosses by 43%, basically uh, everybody but uh, Bosses, and increases its duration by 3 seconds, which is actually pretty insane because of the, the fact that the Daybreak super was pretty much the ad killing super of the warlock now many people may argue for the stormcaller and nova warp but i gotta say Dawnblade making it so you can get more super every time you get kills that in my opinion makes it the superior thing for getting ad kills and on top of that it does some pretty incredible damage and, and on top of that it also got a damage buff which is pretty insane and i gotta say a lot of these changes for these different supers are very very good for one specific reason because they specialize you know a celestial nighthawk doing more damage against boss is exactly what you want a daybreak super doing more damage against the regular ads and not bosses exactly what you want every single one of these supers went through a specialized change which makes them specialize for what they do best and in my opinion that is exactly what Bungie should be doing with all of the different supers. For example, I've always said in the past the Sentinel class was always just a worse version of the Smash class or even the Arc Staff. So why would you ever want to use the Sentinel if you have a, a much better alternative? So I've always said, for example, the Sentinel class should get a lot more resistance or be more of a tank class, being able to use more defensive capabilities. Um, but they still haven't gone by and done that with the Sentinel class. So there's a lot of different changes that I didn't mention in this video. Again, check out the links in the description down below to find the patch notes to see all the different changes. Uh, there was a couple of nerfs, for example, the Nova Warp and the Blade Barrage got a lot of nerfs. There's a cool little changes to the Sun Warrior, uh, the Sunspot stuff of the Titan Sunbreaker class. However, they're really not that good because it was a 20 and 25% increase for PvP and PvE respectively. But there's going to be a lot of different changes that I didn't mention in this video. Go check them out. There's actually a lot of really cool stuff over there. You may find something that's uh, quite interesting that I may have missed. But that's pretty much it. That's the video for guys today. Surprise fluffer here at the very end. Of course, my name is Midnight Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next.